And I want to begin our coverage live here tonight with Nick Robertson. He is out front live in Stuttgart, Israel, which is about 45 miles south of where I'm standing right now. And Nick, uh, where you are, uh, many loud explosions just moments ago. What's happening as best as you can tell? Yeah, there's a lot of helicopter activity in the sky. I heard fighter jets. This is not that uncommon, but we've heard a lot of mechanical heavy equipment moving in the area between this town and the Gaza, Gaza fence, which is le less than a couple of miles, really, from where we're standing right now. So there's a lot of me machinery, mechanized units being, military units being maneuvered in that area at the moment. We don't know what for, but the explosions that we've been experiencing here here over the past uh, past perhaps hour or so, but pretty intense up, up here uh, in the past 20 minutes. If you see a big flash go off behind me, count to, count to three, count to four, count to five, and then you will hear a huge explosion. The explosions have been enough to shake the roof of this building here. So they're impacting in Gaza a couple of miles away, and it's enough to shake the roof of the building here. But what we found when we went to Kafa Aza, which it took, by the way, it took the Israeli Defense Forces 48 hours of fighting against Hamas to take back control of it. Um, what we found there and what the Israeli Defense Forces sh wanted to show us was what they were describing as the brutality of the way that people were treated there, of, of the residents were treated, that some of them had their hands bound, that, that whole families were executed, parents, children, people even beheaded, he said. This is what happened on the road there. The drive into Kafa Aza is chilling. Evidence of Hamas's butchery everywhere. This Israel Defense Force general shocked at what he found. I thought about uh, um, General Eisenhower that come to the death uh, camp in Europe and the first uh, thing that he said is bring the press young children. He did the same, inviting about 50 journalists. You will see. It's a, it's a big massacre, a big, a big disaster. Have you ever seen anything like this in your career never, before? Never, never. Less than a mile from Gaza, 70 Hamas fighters stormed in here early Saturday, some even flying. They're telling us this is one of the paragliders that flew in here. You can see the engine here, the propellers here made of carbon fiber the fuel tank up here and the frame of it and the seat at the front. The IDF in control now after a two-day battle. Hamas lie where they fell. Only now the extremes of their barbarity becoming apparent. 700 plus civilians lived here. How many were killed still unclear. How they died Brutally apparent. Some decapitated, they say. Kill babies in the front of their parents and then kill the parents. They kill parents and we found babies between the dogs and the, and the uh, family that killed before him. They cut head of the people. Each body bag, silent sentinel to the intelligence failure that allowed Kafa Aza and other communities near Gaza to be overrun and motivation for troops too. We wait to the switch, to, to switch ourselves from the defense to the attack because, you know, we, we defend our people and till now we collect their and when body. And you say you're going to attack, will you be going into Gaza? So if we can it's see it here, not, look, it's, it's, uh, it's you know, on the now horizon. I, I look to the next 100 yards. This is my you mission. take care of the next 100 yards? Next 100 yards, and I fight to the next 100 yards, and then look to forward. Forward to a possible showdown with Hamas. How and when? Still to be determined. And that's really where I think these troops find themselves at the moment. They're waiting for that political decision. The, the sense with them today was that they were sort of there was a sort of a pause, but not a pause where you sit back and rest, but a pause where you, 
where you change posture and begin to lean forward and you get that sense for them they're really waiting to get the political direction of what they need to do they know that if they go into gaza that this will be a very bloody fight a very dangerous fight for them because they'll be fighting in in streets in small streets in in civilian neighborhoods where they're the enemy where hamas Islamic Jihad know the terrain where the population is against them, but also in an environment where their rules of engagement are to avoid civilian casualties. Yet in, in an environment like that in Gaza, civilian casualties, as we've seen in the past, do and will happen. So it, all of this stands in front of Israel, stands yeah. in front of the prime minister right now, and most particularly stands in front of those troops yes. we were with today. Aaron. All right, Nick, thank you very much. And Major Ben Wallhouse is a spokesperson for the Israel Defense Forces for the IDF. And I very much appreciate your time, Major, uh, on the back of this reporting. And, and here we are uh, tonight. Uh, Hamas obviously has always been a, a brutal organization. Now, though, these reports we're seeing beheadings, ISIS like cruelty, babies. Have you seen a shift in their tactics? Well, Hamas has always been a murderous terrorist organization and has openly stated its explicit aim to kill all the Jews and all the Israelis that it can. So in terms of who it is as an, organiza as an organization, that's nothing new. But surely the extent and the barbaric nature of these attacks is something that we haven't seen before. And as your journalists saw today, as our forces go through the South and clear house by house, making sure there is no terrorist presence left, we're starting to hear those stories. We're starting to find those corpses that were brutally mutilated, entire communities massacred. And yes, as you say, this is something that we haven't seen before. Major, there's the strikes coming from Gaza. I also understand there was a clash between IDF soldiers uh, and Hamas militants inside Israel. In the north, meantime, uh, three rockets were seen launched from Syrian territory, according to the IDF, just tonight. Uh, rockets were launched from Lebanon earlier. Where does security of Israeli land stand at this hour? Yes, this is an extremely complex security situation. We are continuing intensive fighting in the south with the aim of stopping Hamas's attacks and making sure they can't carry these kinds of attacks out again. Thousands of rockets are still being fired into Israeli cities indiscriminately. And at the same time, as you say, on our northern border, and, and on our eastern border, we have attacks, anti-tank fire, rocket fire from Lebanon and Syria. We have called up over 300,000 reserve soldiers who have left their families and are deployed on all of their borders. And in the north, we're watching very carefully and making sure that the message is clear, that no one should join in the fight. Uh, Reuters is reporting, uh, Major, that for months leading up to the attack, Hamas misled Israel to believe that it didn't want to fight, uh, didn't want a confrontation. And the report from Reuters cites a source close to Hamas saying that the organization actually even went so far as to construct a mock Israeli town, um, a settlement in Gaza, where they practiced a military landing. They did all these things. They trained to storm it. Can you confirm any of this? Well, Hamas's intentions have always been clear. The fact that it makes a mock Israeli town to invade shows that Hamas's war is a war against civilians. Hundreds of terrorists streaming across the border and massacring women and children and elderly is a war against civilians. Taking civilians, entire families into Gaza, abducting them, that's a war against civilians. And at the same time, they're using their own civilians as human shields, placing their military targets inside homes, mosques, uh, hospitals, all in an effort to use their civilian population as shields. So uh, in terms of any sort of a mock, you know, settlement that they may have created, do you now know where that is or what they were doing? Do you, do you now have the intelligence to sort of look at how this actually was trained for and accomplished? Well, we're looking forward at the moment. Our immediate priority is to stop Hamas's attacks. Their rocket attacks indiscriminately into our cities are continuing as your viewers are seeing right now, attempted attacks by land, by air from Gaza. And our immediate priority is to protect our civilian population from further attacks. All right, Major, I appreciate your time and thank you very much. Of course, obviously uh, it is it's past two in the morning, so another, another late or all night for you. Thank you very much, sir.